Good morning. We're going to continue with behavior toward infinity. We found that the limits as x approaches uh, negative infinity was negative infinity, and the limit as x approached positive infinity was positive infinity. We had a rational function. The degree of the numerator was higher than the degree of the denominator, so we uh, knew we had some kind of functional asymptote. We knew uh, it was a slant asymptote, so we're going to use long division in order to determine that slant asymptote. So we take the uh, denominator, which is x squared minus x minus 12, and divide it into the numerator, which is x cubed minus 4x squared, and I'm going to put some place savers in here, plus 0x plus 0. Um, now, long division, uh, x squared into x cubed goes in there x times, x times x squared is x cubed, uh, x times negative x is negative x squared, uh, and then x times negative 12 is negative 12x. So now we subtract, I'm going to use a different color when I do, uh, when we subtract, this becomes a negative, this becomes a positive, and this becomes a positive. So we subtract, and x cubed minus x cubed is zero. Negative 4x squared plus x squared is negative 3x squared. And then uh, 0x plus 12x is just plus 12x. We can still divide x squared into negative 3x squared, so we do so. x squared will go into negative 3x squared negative 3 times. Same process as before, negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Uh, negative 3 times um, negative x is plus uh, 3x. And then uh, negative 3 times negative 12 is positive 36. Sorry, I'm running out of room there. Um, now we subtract again, and this will become a positive, we'll erase this, this will become a negative, and this will become a negative. So when I subtract, uh, ne negative 3x squared plus 3x squared is 0, uh, 12x minus 3x is going to be 9x, and then 0 minus 36 is negative 36. So this tells us that we have a slant asymptote or functional asymptote, I'll just call it a slant asymptote. Um, and that is at uh, y equals x minus 3. Now determine, to determine uh, if uh, the uh, rational function, sorry, the function ever crosses the, fu the uh, functional asymptote, the slant asymptote, whatever you want to call it, um, you can do one of two things. You can set the numerator of the remainder, which, you know, the, the numerator of the remainder is 9x minus 3x, 36, uh, equal to 0. Or you can set the entire function equal to the slant asymptote and solve and see if you get a true statement. Uh, usually, I would probably take the shortcut and say 9x minus 36 equals 0. Um, but in this case, uh, I kind of caution against you doing that because you are going to get x equals 4. And honestly, <laughs> if you notice, this is why I have this under, I've kept this up here the whole time. x cannot equal 4, so that's actually an untrue statement. But um, we usually do it that way, and there's plenty of examples, I think, of doing it that way. So I'm just going to show you that it, it works either way, and you would, you would have to remember that detail. And I, I, don't, I don't know that I would really remember it. Um, but this is definitely true. I mean, if, if this function crosses this function, then y equals this and y equals that. So we can say, and I'm going to put this in factored form, uh, x squared minus, uh, I mean, x squared times x minus 4 divided by x plus 3 times x minus 4 equals x minus 3. And I'm going to actually, well, I mean, it wouldn't really matter. I don't see why I can't, or I don't see why it would bother you if I cross this out now. Um, I mean, if I multiply both sides, they're still going to divide out. And then when I multiply both sides by x plus 3, I get x squared equals x plus 3 times x minus 3. Well, 
that's a difference of perfect squares. So we have x squared equals x squared minus 9. If we subtract x squared from both sides, you know, of course we get an untrue statement which says that 0 equals negative 9. And the last I checked, 0 didn't equal negative 9. So we got an untrue statement. So therefore, the function never crosses the slant asymptote y equals x minus 3. Um, like I said, I mean, you could, you could do this to determine it as well. I mean, you would actually set the whole remainder, but when you multiply the denominator by 0, you just get 0. But in this case, you get x equals 4. And you, I mean, I wrote that up there just so I would remember and so that you would remember, but x can equal 4. I mean, that's an untrue statement in this case, too. But this, I think, is more um, obvious. I think that this, like, tells you it's a, it's a little extra work, but this, you know, just, like, drives it home that, that it's not true.